Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through a number of different techniques uh, for building custom agents, and then also how you could use that to basically do a custom search over a particular site to get answers uh, for a particular query that you're going to get. Um, we'll also look at putting uh, memory into an agent, doing a custom output parser for an agent, for a React style agent as we go through this. All right, so here's what I'm starting off with. But you can see I've basically just brought in the standard stuff like normal. All right, and we're going to be using uh, just one tool in this case. The tool that I'm going to use is basically DuckDuckGo. And you'll see that as we you know, go through, I'm actually going to change this a little bit too. So this is a standard implementation of how you would use DuckDuckGo or like the search query, any of these ones in this. But we actually going to change it a little bit so that we've got a custom search. All right. So the agent that I'm going to be building is going to be loosely based on being a, a medical advice agent. So you should always be careful with this kind of thing, giving out medical advice and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you should put this into production. I'm not saying that you should use this. I just wanted to show you a good example of where we can get a, a lot of information from one particular site and use that to answer questions uh, that people have c coming in. So really this could apply to any site that you want to basically do Q and A over. In this particular example, we're going to be focusing on WebMD and building a medical search answer system that uses the information in WebMD to get our answers and bring them back. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got. So the standard one is if we just go for DuckDuckGo search and we basically do a search, right? You'll see that we get a string back. If we look at it out, we will get this answer back. Now, this answer could be coming from a variety of different sites, right? Because at this stage, it's basically just doing a search on DuckDuckGo for any site for this. So really what we want is something like this. So you've probably seen this in Google searches. DuckDuckGo works the same. Where if we do site colon and then we put in a specific site, we can actually limit where the searches come from. And just to show you this, if we looked at DuckDuckGo itself, you can see that I can put in a search here where I basically say site webmd.com, and then I can put in how can I treat a sprained ankle. And sure enough, all these results that I'm getting back, are WebMD results. So that, that's the key thing that I want to have uh, you know, in there. All right, now back in our notebook. So we can see that this is what uh, gets returned when we do site.run like this. So there are multiple ways that we could do this. We could try and put this into the prompt so that when it get, returns back, you know, what it should search, it puts this site colon in front of it. Because we're just doing one site, it's actually just easier to hard code this in. So here you can see, I'm basically just going to take this in. We're going to have this duck wrapper, which is going to be search results. It's going to do the search.run. It's going to put in the site colon WebMD uh, before it. And then we're going to basically pass in for the tool. We're actually going to say that this is search WebMD now. And the tool will basically just take the input that gets given to it and pass it into this duck wrapper here. And it will return back the search results just like we would have before if we just did a plain search.run here. All right, next up is our prompt template. So for this custom agent, we need to have a prompt template. And you can see here, we're basically just defining the actual sort of prompt template of where it's going to be answer the following question as best you can. But speaking as a compassionate medical professional, you have access to the following tools. And in this case, we've given it, we're going to be passing in the WebMD search there. This basically just outlines what the sort of React style is for this. And then finally, we basically just pass in the input question and then the scratch pad. So at the start, the scratch pad will be empty. And then over time, it will basically fill out that with the, it's thinking with it's like, you know, it's question, it's thought, it's actions, et cetera, before it gets to the final answer. So we also want to set up a you know, custom prompt template, which is going to take it that string. And this is going to basically handle the intermediate steps for us. So we've got our list of tools that we're going to be passing in there. But we also want to handle this agent scratch pad that's going on in there. 
And that's not something that the user will put in. That's something that's going to be automated in the actual agent itself. So this is why we're using the custom prompt template here. Basically, we get the intermediate steps out from what we got back. And then we, we're going to basically just define these things out. So we'll use them as the thoughts and we'll insert the observation in there. And we'll keep the agent scratch pad so that each time it does a query, it's going to be updating the agent scratch pad as we go through until it basically gets to the finish. And then it will start new for a different query. And you'll see that this is where they're basically talking about that when we do, do this custom uh, template, we're not actually putting in the agent scratch pad or the tools. All of that is going to be uh, generated dynamically from what we've basically put in there or already in here. Okay, so next up is the custom output parser. So I previously did a video about output parsers and stuff like that and showed you that they could be really useful for getting things back in JSON or some other kind of format. The other thing that they're used for is with agents, we basically need to have some logic that deals with what we get back. Now, in particular, there's, you know, for the tools, we're going to get back the action, which is telling us what tool it is, and we're going to get the input to that tool. So you'll see here that this custom output parser is basically taking uh, what it got back. It's looking at it first to see, okay, is it the final answer? So if it says final answer in there, it knows that, ah, okay, the agent should finish. And so it just goes into this finish agent mode and gives the final answer out. If it's not at the final answer, it then basically does regex to pass out the action that's given and then the inputs to that action here, right? So this is how it's doing the logic to get the reasoning from the actual uh, model itself back to decide, okay, what tool do I actually use for this and what's going to be the input to that? And you can see if there's no match, it will basically just return, it could not pass LLM output. So if you're using this with a lot of the open source models, you'll find that you won't get something back in a format that you can pass it. It could be that it just doesn't write you know, action and tell it, or it could be that it does action, but it doesn't actually tell you which action. And then that's where you're going to see this kind of like could not pass the LLM output for this. But once it's got that, it basically just returns back an agent action with the, the tool input, right? So this is with what we've got here. Uh, and then the, you know, any sort of stuff to do with the LLM that we've got in there. So we basically just instantiate this custom output parser that we've got there. And that's going to be, we're going to use that for this. So you can also have some different ways to define the stopping sequence and stuff like that. Usually this will be done basically on the observation. When it gets to an observation, then it goes, you know, well, okay, let's stop there. Let's put it into the custom parser. Let's look at it at the output that we get back. So now we need to actually make this chain here. So the chain that we're using is just a, a single action agent. We're going to pass in the LLM chain. So this is just a very standard chain that you've seen in lots of the videos that I've made. And you can see that the prompt that we're passing in, we can see that the tools, so we've got the tool names for, for each tool in tools. We've got the output parser that we just made and, and put up here. So you can see, we basically just defined that up there. So that's, what's going to go in here. And then we can, we're telling it, we're going to stop on new line observation, meaning that what it should do is when it says, okay, I want this particular tool, this particular input, and then it doesn't reason in the same way that we do. It doesn't know that, okay, now I should just stop it's actually going to co keep going and give us the observation. And so that's why we stop on this so that when the output of the model comes back, we can pass that in as the observation there. And then we can basically pass in the allowed tools names that it's allowed to use. And if it doesn't use one of those, obviously then it will return an, an error. So, okay. We then just put this together uh, in, as an agent executor here. This is you know, ex agent executors just take agents and tools and put them together. So this is what we're doing here. We've basically got our agent that we're passing in. It's basically primed for some certain tools based on what we passed out here. Sure enough, we pass those tools in. We're going to pass in a verbose equals true, just so we can see what's going on. 
and then we can run it. And you can see here, we're basically saying, okay, agent executor run, how can I treat a sprained ankle? And I even spelt it wrong, but it's obviously worked out what I meant there. And you can see that as we go through it, it's basically decided, okay, thought, I need to find out what the best treatment is for a sprain. Okay, the action is going to be search WebMD. And then what's it going to search on WebMD is going to be sprained ankle treatment. And then it would get to observation and it would stop. And that's where the actual tool then kicks in because it's gone to the output parser. The output parser has decided, okay, to use this tool. This is the, this blue text here is the result we got back from the tool. And then this is it kind of summing up, okay, uh, what I got back, how am I going to use this? So it now says, okay, I know the best treatment for a sprain is to apply cold press. And then finally, it's now getting to the bit where it's, it's decided to finish the chain. Even though we can't see that, it's decided to do that and it's outputting that. So let's look at that in debug mode. One of the best ways to learn these things is in debug mode. So we just say langchain.debug equals true. We come in here. I've just copied the text. So I've got the misspelling again there. We can see that, okay, it starts out with just the input at the chain. Start. And then we can see that the immediate steps, there's nothing in there. And then we can see that it's gone through and it's, it's got the prompt going in there. And then now it's basically generated out its answer. So what's its generated answer out? Thought, I need to find out the best treatment is for a sprain. What well, the best treatment is for a sprain. Action, search WebMD. Action input, let me just scroll along here. Action input, sprained ankle treatment. So that's what it put out on that first pass. And it basically did a stop there. We can see how many tokens, we can see what model it used, all that sort of stuff. That then is now being passed to the tool. So we can see that the tool is WebMD and we're getting the input is sprained ankle treatment that we got there. This is going to then return back and it returned back this text for this. And then this got passed into the actual LLM chain. Now we can see now intermediate steps basically has that, oh, we did a search of WebMD. This is what we searched. This is what we got back. And now it can basically decide, okay, how to, to handle that. And it's going to go through that and it's going to basically decide, okay, well, you know, this is how it's going to summarize that or use that information and our prompt to answer as a compassionate medical professional that we've got here. And then you'll see as we go through this, it's basically, it's decided that, okay, it, it's got to the, the, the finish of the chain and we can see that, okay, it, it's, it's gone through, it, it's done that it's given us the output. And then finally that output is what we're, you know, outputting for this. So I, you can see, how do we know that it got to the finish of the chain? Remember, if we were in our output parser, we were looking for final answer. And so we can see that it generated that here. And then sure enough, final answer is there. So that's what it tells us that, oh, okay, it's at the end of the chain. And just take this bit that comes out of it as the final answer out. And sure enough, we can see that's what we had come out here. All right. So this is it how the actual chain works and it shows you how you can customize it as well here. Okay. What if we want to add a memory? Now, if I went and just did like multiple queries with this, each query is going to be a, an individual thing. It's not going to be able to use multiple queries. So we want to add a conversation memory here. So there are kind of two ways of thinking about memory. You've got your sort of short-term conversation memory of what's going on in the conversation. And then if you were building an agent for long-term interactions, you would then have probably like a vector store or something like that for a memory. Here, we're basically building a conversation memory for this. So you can see now we've got the same prompt as before. The only difference here is that we're now passing in previous conversation and we're passing in this history that's in there. And you'll see the memory that we're going with is just going to be a standard conversation buffer memory. And we're just going to remember the last two turns for this. Now you could play with this and make this longer. This is something you would try out with this. We need to update the prompt now so that we're passing in the history. 
going in there as well. We define our, you know, our single action agent again, as we're going through this, we've defined the memory and then basically we're passing in into our agent executor. We're doing everything exactly the same. We're just passing in the memory now. So finally, you'll see that when I ask it, okay, how can I treat a sprained ankle? I actually spelt it right this time. You can see that, okay, it, it's basically giving us the same answer back as what we were getting before. But now we could ask it something like, okay, what meds could I take? And if we did the, what meds could I take with the previous one, it wouldn't know that we were talking about a sprained ankle. So by giving it the memory, we've now got what meds could I take? And it's passing all of that in so that it says here, I need to know what medications are available to treat a sprained ankle. So it's got the, the topic that we've been talking about is the sprained ankle there. And now that the meds are relating to that. Same with the next question, how long will it take to heal? It understands because now it's got the memory, I need to find out how long it takes to, for a sprained ankle to heal. And it basically gets that result back and you can see at this stage, we're, we're getting, you know, a long context of everything that we've had in the observation going through this. So here it's basically extracting that out, giving us the final answer. And remember that it would have given us final answer slash N and then what it would said, and that the output parser is basically just cutting that off so that we get this nice final answer out here is what we're seeing. And we can see now we've got a nice answer. It typically takes four to 21 days for a sprained ankle to heal. During this time, it is important to reduce swelling and apply cold press, et cetera. You'll notice that one of the things that I basically said in the prompt was that if it was a serious condition, that it should advise people to speak to a doctor. So it does start to, you know, put some of these things in there of like, you know, if a pain persists or worsens, it's important to seek medical attention. And again, here, if the pain persists or worsens, it, it's important to seek medical attention. So this whole thing is basically an example of building a custom agent with Langchain, putting it all together, going through, putting in some memory, using a custom search in this. And this really could be applied to any topic that you want to do it to. If you wanted to, you could also add in things like a Wikipedia page lookup as a tool. You could have it ping a custom API to get information. All of these things that you know, are possible with this kind of agent. Anyway, as always, if you've got questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.